Nicole Everett and this is Conversations with Nicole here at the Union Bank in Tallahassee, Florida. This week's featured guest is Mr. Scott Carswell, the owner and operator of the Moon Night Club, who's been serving the Tallahassee community for more than 31 years. We also have segments in entertainment, education, and health. So come on, let's get this conversation started. <music> Today's featured guest is Mr. Scott Carswell, the one, the only, the originator of the Moon Night Club. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. So, Scott, you're originally from Tallahassee. Oh, yes, ma'am. All right. So well, how did you get started in the nightclub business? Well, I've always been into music ever since I got uh, out of Florida State, although I graduated in accounting, but music was what I loved. And uh, always played in bands. And uh, I did a nightclub or two before this one uh, in Nashville, I remember, and, and in South Florida. And, uh, and I just wanted a performance club, one where we would have a space for live music and not just uh, walking in and listening to music. So that's how this was born. Okay. So it started in 1996? Well, we started designing it in 84. Okay. And we opened 85. in uh, April yeah. of 85. Okay, so 31 years in. Wow. 31 and going. Goodness. So you've seen a lot of acts. Well, we're over 3,000. Okay. Now, who have been some of your favorites? Oh, my golly. Well, you got to start with the Manhattans because oh. that's where we started. Okay. Blue Levitt, Gerald Alston. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. No, that's pretty good. And, uh, of course, B.B. King was that same year. Oh, wow. And then we had some jazz things. We had uh, uh, Spirajara. We had Country. We had, uh, I forget the fellow's name now, that uh, Swinging Again, what was his name? Anyway, he was something. He okay. had a big hit. And it was a great first year. We, we really had everything we could find that was... We had, on this stage right here, we had two nine-foot grand pianos. We had a Steinway wow. and a Kauai. Okay. Because Leonidas uh, Lipovetsky was our grand opening classical music performer. And uh, then, of course, Marcus Roberts came after that. Mm -hmm. He only plays Steinways. But back then, we had to have, uh, we, and we actually had two nine-footers. He was crazy as that is wow. 31 years ago. So how did you come up with the concept for the moon? Well, the concept was what I was saying. It was, it's just universal. We, we, I didn't want a venue that had an identity. I didn't want a nightclub that had an identity. I wanted it to flow with whatever the entertainment was that night. Mm -hmm. And that's where people said I was crazy. And of course, I guess they're correct, but um, they, <laughs> we, we did it anyway, uh, because at that time, no one had ever had a nightclub that flipped from country to urban. The concept was even radical that you would do such a thing. And we had a hard time with the money part, getting it done with that theme, because I said, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, half my life is r and Otis Redding is who I identify with in my growing up years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I wanted, was an R&B club, but I knew it, the town couldn't support this bigger room with just one theme. It had to, everybody had to have a piece of it mm -hmm. for it to work. And somehow that's what we've been able to achieve is one night would be one thing and the next and the next. And I, I came up with this little slogan and said, we want everybody to come to the moon and just be darn sure you know what night you're coming because mm -hmm. you don't know what you're going to get. That's right. 
You might get surprised one night. You, uh, you, <laughs> you might get urban. George Clinton and the people. <laughs> right. You know, I know. Instead of just the Stetsons. <laughs> Instead of the Stetsons. Well, last Friday, we, we didn't do Stetsons, mm -hmm. and we had the alumni gala, mm -hmm. or party as we mm -hmm. call it now. Mm -hmm. The Henry Skip Hunter, who was my classmate, um, and we had his party last mm -hmm. Friday. So we cancel our regular nights every now and then. Mm -hmm. Um, and do like that. things that are big for the community mm -hmm. and then come back with them again. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that we can do that because uh, consistency in the nightclub business on your regular dance nights is your main thing. You don't want to reinvent every week. Right. Otherwise, you'll, you'll never survive. So do you feel like you have competition here? Competition? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's always competition okay. for the entertainment dollar. Mm -hmm. And for sure now, there's. Uh, I think people are going back. We had our heyday when we were the only thing in town and we were the big club. Mm -hmm. And back then, people assimilated in, in, in a big manner like this. Now there's so many small rooms. It's not really a deterrent. Or it's, it's, so competition, yes, the, the world has moved different mm -hmm. to smaller rooms. Oh, on the DJ front, you can hear the greatest DJs on your iPhone, on your iPad, mm -hmm. and see them. Whereas 25, 30 years ago, you had to come into the room and hear them. That's right. So that competition, uh, just the entertainment dollar. I mean, it's, Tallahassee is a serious town okay. for entertainment. People act like we're a, a secondary market. But I, I like to think of us as a, a primary market. Okay, I do too. So. And tell me what you believe the value that the moon brings to the community. What value or importance does the moon bring to the Tallahassee community or even the greater Tallahassee community at large? Because I know people come in from surrounding areas to have to participate in the entertainment that you offer here. I, I think at this point, the great value that we offer is my wife and I, um, after 31 years, have been blessed to have this business and, and, and operate it is that the charities that work that we do, that people get to use this room mm -hmm. for no money. Uh, they get to use the room and present their show, whether it's 50 people or it's 1,500. Okay. Um, we're over, and these, these were over 30 different events that we give it up for nice. a, a year, which is strain, it's a strain. But it, the community, I think, has embraced this room, mm -hmm. as I have, and my wife and our children and our family and everyone. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's what we've grown into. We have great parking. Mm -hmm. We've uh, kept the building up well. And we don't fit everything. No, no venue does. Right. But we're available. The Democratic Party will have their big soiree when Al gets elected Tuesday night. Uh, we'll have a big party that night, mm -hmm. um, and we'll turn around and, and do something different the next night, and then the next night, and it, it's just, it's a community venue now. Okay, excellent. Any uh, last things that you want to, any party words or anything you want to tell us, any more you want to tell us about the moon? The old man's getting a little, uh, <laughs> in, uh, looking for the rocking chair here. So, <laughs> so, uh, I love I, it. I'm happy to do my part, but it is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. especially for my wife and, and me at the same time, it's a lot of work. But okay. we're blessed to have it. Uh -huh. It's a tough business. But, um, you know, I, I, we do like it. And we're honored to, to Tallahassee has supported us for this long. Excellent. Well, here you've heard it. Stay tuned for more. Thank you. Welcome back to Conversations with Nicole. Today's education segment features Brett Ketchum of the Everhart Excellence Foundation, one of the founding members. Welcome, Brett. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad to be here. So tell us, how did the Everhart Foundation get started? Well, my son uh, was born with special needs. He was significantly mentally and physically handicapped, mm -hmm. and he started attending Gretchen Everhart School. 
and we noticed as he started that the school was facing, facing additional problems that a typical school would not, um, such as, you know, they don't need textbooks, they need technology and things like that. So me and a group of parents and concerned citizens decided to start a private foundation with the goal of raising funds to assist the teachers at the school. Great. So when did the foundation get started? Uh, about five years ago. Okay. And about how much money have you raised this fund? We've raised over $200,000. And um, one thing that we're very proud about is that I think it's 98.7% of every dollar goes directly to the school. So we have, it's all volunteer board and um, we uh, hope to continue to keep doing good things. That's incredible. Now tell us a little bit about the school, about how many students and... There's approximately 250 students and they're from Leon and surrounding counties mm -hmm. like Franklin, Taylor, Gadsden and Jefferson County. So it really okay. is a regional school and it's from the age of pre-K to the age of 22. Wow, wow. So what are some of your needs? What are some of the foundation needs? Well, the needs obviously are, are funds, um, but you know, these students need um, adaptive speaking devices, adaptive bicycles, changing tables, things that you wouldn't okay. normally think of. So mm -hmm. that's basically the area of need right now. I think their focus is on uh, technology right now. Mm, okay, so have you, you said you've utilized some partners, correct, in order to get a lot of things done? Yes, we are. One of our exciting projects we have going right now is um, we're trying to build something we call the Owl's Landing. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a project for the older students with basketball courts and some other athletic facilities. But this, um, park will be open also to the neighborhood and the community for them to use as well. Okay. And we've had some wonderful partners um, that have partnered with us, including PSBI, who's agreed to help us build the project, McNeil Plumbing, Wooden Partners um, Design Team, and More Bass Consulting. So we've got some great partners that on the fall. That is exciting. That's great. Wonderful work. I'm so glad to hear that this is available to the students of Leon County with special needs. Anything else you want to tell us about the Everhart Excellence Foundation? Well, no, thank you very much for all your support, and we're happy to be here. And if you have any interest at all, please feel free to stop by the school or check out our website. And thank you so much for your time, Nicole. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thank you, Brett. Welcome back to Conversations with Nicole. Our health segment is featuring our special guest, Ms. Seta Barnhart of Seed Time Harvest Farm. Welcome, Seta. Thank you, Nicole. It's such a pleasure to be here. So tell us, tell us about Seed Time Harvest. Seed Time Harvest Farms was created out of Jefferson and Madison County farmers who seem to have more food than they have actually people who obtain the food. So we had a lot of waste of food growing forward. So we do a grocery bag delivery service mm -hmm. based out of the farmer's produce that we have available from the farmers in those areas. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So how busy are you these days? Uh, quite busy. We just relaunched our next season. It is a seasonal operation. Okay. So as the food becomes available, we try to make sure that there is food coming straight from our farms. Mm -hmm. um, so in those down seasons where there is no food and it's growing, we shut down for those seasons. Okay. But it's now the fall season, which is the second harvest mm -hmm. or second summer crop, so to speak. So there's still cucumbers, um, still tomatoes, peppers, uh, eggplant, and those type of seasonal vegetables that we bag up from our farmers. Um, some things we do get from some of our other vendors, and we deliver it to families, mm -hmm. um, whether it's at their business or at their homes. Um, we've also just launched this in Gainesville as well. My son is working a venue down in Gainesville. So That's we're great. trying to go regional okay. um, because there's so many farmers that have so much food um, that just needs to get to our family. So we're trying to make sure they get as much now as Now you possible. know I'm a gardener too. Yes, ma'am. So how important is, is gardening and fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh pro produce for people? Well, the basics of anything you grow for yourself is going to be better than what you get in the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at the impact of what's happening with our health, just all the health issues, um, the cancer rates, the diabetes rates, the high blood pressure, most of that's coming from our diet. And if we learn how to eat fresh foods, especially foods that we've grown, we know right. where they're coming from. They're not coming from California. They're not coming from somewhere other than your regional area. Mm -hmm. Because the nutrients in your food growing in the soil and the mm -hmm. dust that you breathe 
adds such a benefit for you as yeah, a person. It does. So it's just important that you eat locally. Mm -hmm. um, and you eat those things seasonally that are grown in your area, just a better benefit overall for your body. Okay, excellent. So what do you see the future of Seed Time Market? Our goal, we're working real hard um, to collaborate with farmers to have their, because this is twofold. This is also a benefit for the farmers um, where much of the crop that they had grown were going to waste mm -hmm. and they were losing money on those fields. We want to make sure that we get as much out of those fields as possible. So we want to create venues, larger venues to have those products. Okay pre-sold, so to speak, that mm -hmm. we're growing ahead of time and knowing exactly when we can harvest for those seasons and get them to either vendors or to more families. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, to make sure our families for all around our regions, this is Jefferson, Madison, Gaston County, inclusive of what we're going on down in central Florida, mm -hmm. um, that we get those produce directly to families. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. So we can expect great things from Seed Time Harvest. I in the pray future. so. Yes, okay. ma'am. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Please stay tuned. Today's entertainment segment features Ms. Tina Maddox, the founder of the Maddox Youth Dance Company. Welcome, Tina. Thank you for having me. So tell me, what prompted you to start the dance theater? Well, I've been dancing for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm originally from Miami, so I always gained, had a passion for dance. Um, I have a dance organization on Florida a and campus uh -huh. called Addiction Dance Experience. Okay. And from there, one of the parents seen the talent that I bring to Tallahassee mm -hmm. and encouraged me to start a youth company. Okay. I was very hesitant about it, but then I gave it a shot and so far it's working pretty well. Good. Now when did you open the company? Um, I started off at a summer camp last year mm -hmm. um, and I went from there so I had about 18 girls return okay and so from there I've had 18 who did our recital and this year I have 32 girls excellent so it's growing good now what age ranges I start from three year olds okay all the way to 18 excellent excellent so what type of dance do you do you offer we do ballet mm -hmm. jazz we're gonna wait on tap. Well, we do tap with the three-year-olds. Okay. Um, we do, I'm gonna get into African later, but I have to get the coordination look up. Okay, okay. Before we get into African, mm -hmm. we do hip hop. Okay. Um, and right now, since all the kids into the dance battle, mm -hmm. we dwindling into that right now, but we're not actually competing yet. Gotcha. I just want them to learn the basis of it. Okay, so are you noticing a difference in the girls in their oh. participation in? Yes. Okay. Um, they pretty, it went from two days a week to four days days out the week. Okay. Um, the parents love them, um, love them being there. So anytime I have additional rehearsals, I don't have any issues with my parents. Okay. They're like, drop them off. Okay. Leave good. them. You can pick them up later. I'll I sit bet. There with them. Uh -huh. um, so they have completely grown. Good. So they're excited to be there? Yes. It's excited to be a part of yes, it? Yes. They okay. keep me motivated, keep me going. Good. It's like um, the family parade. I was tired. I bet you won't. But they were so excited. Yeah. They were excited to wear their little jackets. Okay. And um, so they gave me the energy gotcha. to keep it moving. Now, is it only for girls or for boys? No, it's too? actually for guys also. Okay. But, you know, with young men, a little hesitant, uh -huh. you know, when it comes to ballet. Okay. But I do offer it also to young men. Okay. And how can someone find where you are and get in contact with okay. you? You can visit my website at Maddox Youth Dance Company. Mm -hmm. And all the information is on there. Or you can give me a call at 850 2841767. Excellent. Thank you for spending some time no, with us today. Thank you. You're welcome. For having me. No problem. Stay tuned for more on Conversations with Nicole. Thank you for tuning in to this week's show. Join us next time for more conversations. And remember, sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried, but you've actually been planted. See you next time. Speak to me. Oh,